and remember to turn on your post notifications to receive prompt updates about all our events. God bless you. Have a fantastic week ahead. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Somebody, it's your season to emerge. I can't hear a believing amen. I still can't hear that believing amen. Talk to your neighbor. It's my season to emerge. Hallelujah. How many of us are hungry for more of God's power, of God's grace, of God's fire? And that's what this song is all about. And I'm sure most of us, we know the song. It says, I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than anybody. There's got to be more. got to be. got to be more than this. You know, you sing it with me. Say, I'm tired of the status quo. Sing it loud. Say, There's got to be more. 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 There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. Gotta be more. Hallelujah. Put your hands together one more time. Power. 
more of your grace, more of your fire. There's gotta be more. More than this. There's gotta be more. Gotta be more. Gotta be more. Gotta be more. There's gotta be more than. There's gotta be more than. We are desperate people. We want more, more Lord. We are desperate people. We want more, more Lord. Come on, sing with me. Sing. We are desperate people. We want more, more Lord. Sing it loud. Sing. We are desperate people. We want more, more. Let's sing it one more time. We are desperate people. We are desperate people. One more. We are hungry people. Yeah. Say, we are desperate people. We want more. We want more. We are desperate people. Oh. Anybody saying more, more, more of those powers? Anybody saying more this morning? I have to be more, gotta be more, gotta be more. Come on, speak it to the six and say, I have to be more, gotta be more, gotta be more. I was made to emerge. I have to be more, gotta be more, gotta be more. One more time. I have to be more. Celebrate Jesus, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody who wants to be more, can you help me tell your neighbor, say, I am more than this. Somebody joining us online, if you're more than this, let us know in the chat room, let us know in the comment. I want you to confess it this morning, say, I'm more than this. Or say one more time, say, I'm more than this. Or, or somebody say it a little better, say, I've got to be more than this. And if you believe that God is making you more in 2022, put your hands together this morning. Celebrate Jesus. Come on, somebody, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, for everyone joining us from home, everyone joining us from wherever you're joining this service from, you may be in a car, at the train station, you may be at the airport about to catch a flight, you may be just be in the comfort of your living room. I want you to put distractions away from you as much as you can and get ready to be blessed in this service today. God has a word for you. And one word from God can change your life forever. Just one word. He sent a word and he lighted the whole of Israel. And when we pray, God, God sends us words. The Bible says he sent his word and he, his word healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. I pray that your word will come. I said I pray that your word will come. And it shall be a word of lifting. It shall be a word of, 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 you know, of, of divine exhortation in the precious name of Jesus. All right, uh, today also we're going to be praying for our children, whether they're teenagers, uh, preteens, you know, kids, toddlers. We just believe that as we go into a new year, we should always speak a blessing over our children. We live in a time and an age where there's a whole lot of attack, onslaught on children. Yeah. At home, in school, you know, uh, the devil is after our children and we will not relent in playing our part. Uh, to separate them for God's goodness. And I believe that your own children shall be for signs and wonders. Uh, I cannot hear your amen very well. I say your own children shall be for signs and wonders. God will protect your children. He will shield them from evil. And every evil seed that has been planted this season will not grow in the heart of our own children. So at the end of this message, I'm also going to be praying from here. If, you are, if you're joining online, uh, that's the time to draw your kids closer. If you can get, you know, oil, you know, olive oil, any kind of oil that you can, uh, uh, I'll pray from here and then you anoint them with oil. And if your kids are here in, in, in the kids' church, uh, 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 in Seeds and uh, Teens Nation, we're, we're, our ministers are also going to go and pray over them and anoint them with oil. And if you have your kids with you right in the room right here, uh, our ministers will also come to pray for them. Uh, under the gallery where we believe that the, uh, at the nursing mother's corner right there. Praise God. I said praise God. All right, are we ready for God's word today? For everyone joining us on all the different platforms, watching from all around the world, and if you're watching this on TV as well, I want you to get set to be blessed. I'm so excited about the word that God is bringing our way today. And um, I'm excited about the things that God has planned to do this season and this year in your life and my life. Uh, so the, 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 the song from the choir this morning already pricked my message. Yeah, it's time to be more. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11 and verse number 12, Matthew 11 and verse 12, it says, since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence. That's the way King James put it. The king, kingdom of God suffers violence. And the violent... Does what? So the violent take it by force. Uh, time will not permit me to read other translations. But this, what this simply means, it says since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has been forcefully advancing. And the forceful advance with it. Yeah. So he's not talking about violence, like domestic violence. No. <laughs> We're not about to point to anybody. It is forceful advancement. Since the day of John the Baptist, when John came and said, repent, the word repent simply means change your mind, turn around, see that your life can be better. There's something better in God than what you have experienced. That was what John was saying. Yeah. 
There's something better in God than what you have experienced. Metanoia in the Greek, uh, repent. It, 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 you know, just like we say paranoia when you are... Uh, there's also metanoia, which is there's something beyond meta that is beyond your thinking. There's a higher thinking. That is metanoia. A higher thinking. Greater than what you have taught before. Like the scripture says in Ephesians 3 and verse 20. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly far and above that which you can ever ask or think. There's something meta. There's metanoia. There's, there's a thinking that is higher. There's a level that is higher. There's a, there's a perspective that is better, higher than your perspective. And when we step into a, a new season like this, God wants us uh, to, to, to understand him in a new manner, to see something better than what we have seen before, to understand something better than what, we have, what, 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 what understanding we've gotten before, because that's the only way we can position for the new things that he wants to do. That's the only way we can position for new things. When we choose higher thoughts, higher thoughts, like he said in Isaiah 55, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your, 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 your thoughts. So somebody, as we step into this new season, God is saying, you can be more. You can be more. You can be more. But you know it's important for you to try to dimension where you are as we discuss this, uh, you know, within the next 30 minutes or thereabout. I need you to understand that for me to be more, I need to be able to dimension where I am. Because if I say uh, I need something more, it means I'm talking about something more than where I am or more than what I have. The dimensioning must be bigger. But if I don't know where I am or who I am or where, you know, what is happening right now, I will not be able to dimension what is more. Yeah. As we have come into this year, some people are struggling to capture what emerge will mean to you. Which area are you going to emerge? Where are the urgent needs for an emergence in your life? And, so, and we're at different places. Some people listen to me right now. You are that place where, you know, it's been good. We can't complain. You know, like we say in this part of the world, you say to somebody, how are you doing? Oh, we can't complain. <laughs> what an answer. Yeah. It's an answer from somebody who feels... Yeah, things are okay. Things are okay. And sometimes we're at that place of things are okay and we're beginning to settle. We're beginning to settle. Some other person, you know, you came into this year, you told yourself, this year is fight to finish. Yeah, it's fight to finish. Me and God will fight. Me and the devil will fight. <laughs> yeah, whatever may be on the way. In fact, some people have made up their mind. Even if my spouse stay on my way, I will crush out. I'm like a trailer that has lost its brake this year. I'm just going to, anybody that tried to stand on my way, I, you know, maybe that's how you came into this year. You're bullish. Yeah. You're willing to press in. That's great. You are the kind of person that will need to help to gain perspective in your bullishness so that you don't crush what you are supposed to build. But you know, there are some people who need impetus. They need to gain momentum. They have settled. And there's more. But you've lost your zest. You've lost that thing, that, you know, that aspiration, that sense of aspiration. You, you, you're trying to feel it, you can't feel it. That's part of the effect of COVID. Yeah. You know... <laughs> I don't know about you, but many people are still... You know, there's a difference between pain and trauma. Give me one minute, I'll break this down so I can get back to, to our discussion. Many people have gone through pain in 2020, major part of 2021. 
as we step into this season, and as the pandemic starts to wane, and that's what we're trusting God for, we have to deal with the trauma. We can't run away from it. Yeah. Many people think, you know, you know I lost a job, a business failed, now I'm bouncing back, I, things are going to be better, and da 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 da. But you need to trust God to help you deal with the trauma. Yeah. Traumas come after the experience. The pain is one thing, the trauma is another. Especially amongst us, you know, uh, uh, people of African descent, we, we don't recognize trauma. <laughs> we are very bullish about dealing with pain, but when it comes to trauma, we, we sweep it under the carpet. You know, we tell ourselves, pick yourself up. What has happened has happened. Move on. Yeah, you can move on, but you also need to trust God and the help of the Holy Spirit to help you deal with the trauma, the effect of what has happened. Yeah. And all this put together is what God is saying we are emerging from. You are not only going to emerge from the pain, you are going to emerge from the trauma. Oh, nobody's here this morning. Yeah. Now speak to somebody watching me online. That trauma will not stop you this year. My God will hold you strong. You shall be made whole. He will send you help. Every word of encouragement, word of healing that you need to come out of that trauma, that will, 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 will abate the effect of that trauma, God is sending it your way this year. In the precious name of Jesus. Somebody say it better, amen. amen. So it's important for us to understand that as we emerge, we are emerging from different places. We are emerging at different levels. Yeah. Somebody is emerging from not enough to more than enough. Somebody is emerging from success to significance. Yeah. Everything is good, but you're still, you still need to emerge. Yeah. You still need to emerge. Let's get into the Word of God. I want to exegete the text from John chapter 12. John chapter 12, and uh, maybe we should read from verse 21. John chapter 12 and verse 21. Jesus described something here. He had an experience. And in trying to get into this text, I want us to understand something that if Jesus will recognize the need to be more, then you and I need to recognize the need to be more and be willing to press in. And this is how we emerge. And I want us to follow through with this principle, this, this, the way Jesus described his images. The Bible says here, I'll go to verse 20, verse 20. Let's start from verse 20, quickly, verse 20, verse 20. Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. You know, when uh, a message is not straightforward, when there's an issue, that's when people pass things from, I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah. If I ask you something and it's so straightforward, is that you go ahead and answer me. Or if I say, can you talk to your brother about something, you just talk to him. You don't have to look for somebody to talk to and then I want to talk to another person to say, let's prepare how we're going to deliver this message. It means there's something about this message. Ordinarily, you see it as in people came and they wanted to see Jesus. So what's all this ula about? What, what's all this protocol about? Just tell Jesus, you have a visitor. Come and see them. Yeah. But the Bible described the people, they were Greeks. They were outside of the current scope of Jesus' ministry or what he had been doing or extending himself towards. They were completely outside of that scope. That was what necessitated all this protocol. And somebody, uh, this year, you are going beyond your usual scope. I cannot hear your amen. I said you are going beyond your usual scope. 
when it's time for more, we have some kind of attitude that wants to envelope us, to tread cautiously, to want to do things, you know, cautiously. And those were, that was what the disciples were trying to do. That's why when you share great dreams with people, they tend to want to, you know, just tell you to slow down. They were, they were just being cautious. How are we going to tell Jesus this? These people want to see him. Yeah. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus, but Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. And verse 24 says, Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone, but if it dies, it produces much grain. Jesus took them straight to the firm in his uh, uh, metaphoric illustration of what was about to happen, that if you're going to be more, if you want to break your scope, if you want to go beyond your initial boundary, you need to visit uh, the firm and understand how seeds grow in the ground and how they multiply. Let me backtrack a little and say a bit more so that somebody will understand me again. In Matthew 15, when you read from verse 24, Matthew 15 from verse 24, can you put it up for me? A woman, or, or, you know, a Canaanite woman came to Jesus. Yeah, came to Jesus. Uh, go to verse 22, verse 22 of Matthew 15. A Canaanite woman came to Jesus and asked, the Bible says, and behold, a woman of, of, of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. Look at that. That's Jesus, the Savior of the world. Answered her not a word. And his disciples came and heard him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. What was happening right then was that Jesus was in this sector. Or operating in this industry. It's called the lordship of the household of Israel. Jews only. Somebody, this year, God is increasing your scope. I cannot, I cannot hear your amen very well. Jesus did not answer this woman. They ought him, send her away for she cries after us. But when he will answer, the Bible says, but he answered and said, I was not sent. Can you hear that? I was not sent except to the lordship of the house of Israel. I was not sent except to the lordship of the house of Israel. That was a perspective. That was a scope. As at the time, then she came, worshipped him, and said, Lord, help me. This woman decided that I will not take no for an answer. And by a stroke of divine mercy, Jesus gave her what she wanted, but that was not his focus or his scope. But he answered and said to her, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to, the, to little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, even the little dog eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. At that point, Jesus knew that this woman had faith. Then Jesus answered, and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed that very hour. The woman pressed in. She was outside of the scope of Jesus, but she pressed in. Jesus himself was outside of his scope. By the time we are reading John chapter 12, they came to meet him again, just like this woman came right here. This woman had to press in, press outside of the scope, because somebody may be listening to me right now, you may be like this woman. How do we demonstrate faith that God, even when we don't qualify, by uh, divine mercy, doors can be opened. By divine mercy, some things can happen. My mind can open. My eyes can see. I can press into something bigger, something greater. Somebody, I don't care where, where you have been in the last two years, last five years. 2022 must be different for you because the God of mercy is showing up at your doorstep. Amen. When mercy shows up, it's not about where you have been. You may have been completely outside of the will of God. But when mercy shows up, when you press by faith, 
like the Canaanite woman, something breaks. This is not part of my message today, but I believe prophetically that this is for somebody here. You came into this service feeling extremely unqualified for grace, unqualified for favor, unqualified for the mercy of God. But mercy has found you today. I said mercy has found you today. So you don't leave this place without pressing into something. And as you go into this new week, keep pressing. God qualifies the unqualified. If you're here, you're completely backsliding. By the time I finish this message and, and, and ask for people to give their life to Christ, don't wish it away. It's just one prayer. Just submit your life. Because the mercy of God has come to you. You're a candidate for divine mercy. God is going to obliterate everything. All the handwriting of ordinance written against you, eh? all the shenanigans and different things that you have done, God is going to turn everything around and 2022 will be your year of new beginning. Yeah. Maybe I'm only speaking to two people here, I recognize that. But those two people, you're not going to be the same again. Yeah. So Jesus, let's leave the, the Canaanite woman alone. <laughs> Jesus, at this point, said, this is my scope. By the time we get to John chapter 11, there was a divine signal that made Jesus to recognize that the scope has changed. The scope has changed. The scope has changed. The scope has changed. They told him that another set of people who are outside of your scope are looking for you. And Jesus told them, the hour has come. The hour has come. Go back to John, 11, John 12. Uh, uh, and, and 24 for me. Uh, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. There's a season for me to press in. There's a season for me to know that I can be more. He said, and most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. And when it dies, it brings forth much fruit, much fruit, much fruit. The seed is a carrier of potential and promise. That's what the seed is. Seed is a carrier of potential and promise. And each and every one of us are carrying seeds. Yeah. We're carrying seeds. As you continue in this year, there are seeds in you that will cause your breaking forth. And my prayer is that God will open your eyes to see them and to be able to do the right things with them, which is to lay them down in the appropriate places. So the person who appreciate the power of seed sowing is the one that is ready to emerge. It's the one that is ready to emerge. There's a seed within each and every one of us. The big question is whether you have identified it. There are seeds within your seed which are only released when your seed is planted and it becomes fruitful. As we go into 2022, as we press further, into what God has in mind for us, each and every one of us must see our lives as a seed that needs to be planted. Jesus described himself, his life, his calling as a seed. He said, if this thing is going to blow beyond this point, we need to bury this seed. And that's what we're examining 